G'day everyone, welcome back to Measure Twice, Cut Once, uh, episode nine of uh, the show. Season four, Chris, we're going along at a quite a brisk pace here. Yes. I'm Dirk from Sumo's Projects, uh, both on Instagram, YouTube, and multiple other platforms. Mm -hmm. And this is my good friend Chris Zurich from uh, Built by Chris, also on other good mini platforms. He can be found around the traps. And? And on measure various, twice cut ones. And on various police stations around the country. Yeah, I thought we were going away from that. Were we? Okay, sorry. Because one of the guests today is actually uh, part of that association who, you know, have the photos of you. Oh. Actually, he can't say much because he appeared on a thumbnail of ours and he wasn't in good form on that. No. <laughs> so, no. yeah, a little bit of uh, exposure going on. <laughs> yeah, a wee bit, yeah. So today we have on the show great conversation, I think. We've got a couple of panellists. We have today Woodboy Whitey up in, uh, where is he, Narrabri? Narrabri, yep. New South Wales. Mm -hmm. Also have the one and only Mark Dana. He's uh, he's up in Townsville, wherever else you can fly out to at, at the spur of the moment. Yep. So hopefully he stays put. And the wonderful Ash from Woodwork and Whiskers on Instagram. And today, Chris, we're going to have a, a really good discussion on... Um, a subject matter that you know is apparent to all of us that crops up from time to time. Uh, we're going to call it where the cracks appear. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, and it's it's a, we're going to have a discussion about well burnout, fatigue with your hobby, and you know when it happens, why it happens, where you go from there. So I think uh, you know it's it's cool, relevant. Um, yep. Doesn't matter whether you're a YouTube person or or just someone in your own shed. You know, mm. is it? There's sort of uh, recognition or critical acclaim we're all searching for. All these sort of questions we'll let the panellists uh, have a yak about and yeah. give, give their I interpretation. Reckon, I reckon that'll be a good good topic for the day. I reckon too, mate. All right, so what do you reckon? I reckon we hook into it. Okay, but uh, should we play an ad first from... Yeah, all right. They're good people. We'll be back after this short break. That's it. G'day, bud. How you going, Papa? I'm good, mate. Listen, have you got any blanks from Mind Matter Create? I certainly do. I, I just happen to have them here in front of you. Okay, I want to buy them, please, because I'm going to turn some pens. It's a pleasure to be able to do business. Here they are, sir. And uh, many happy returns on your pen making endeavours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, sir, you have to pay for them. Yeah, so Chris, uh, introducing the gentleman, go uh, say good day. Ash, how you going? Good, thanks, fellas. How's yourselves? Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Mark Dana up in Townsville. How are you, Copper? G'day. How are you? I'm good. Good. And uh, he's fully cloaked on this episode, uh, Grant, uh, Woodboy Whitey. Yeah, he's, good, day, Grant. he's got clothes on, which is good. Yeah, well, you, you gave me that condition that I had to be clothed this time, so but that's all right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm seeing with the rest of us, you've scraped the bottom of the barrel to... To get this episode <laughs> off the ground. Actually, that, that uh, video is performing uh, quite well on YouTube. The one with Whitey. I, I think the thumbnail is uh, yeah. The the ladies are starting to see the thumbnail and go, "What's this all about?" Oh, these two good-looking, bald-headed guys that we must have a check that this check it out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, getting off topic there. Had his yeah, had his weapon under the um under the cloak there. So. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Look, guys, um, yeah, the reason is for the discussion today, uh, a lot of things happen along the, the time, the journey, you know, when you get into making things, your hobby, generally life. Uh, we can come across a couple of hurdles, you know, it's like um, is, there, is there burnout? Is there fatigue? Is there the issue where you start a project that it all goes pear-shaped, you give up on it, you come back to it? You know, so there's a whole array of questions that we ask ourselves. Um, is this is this hobby worth doing? Mm. Do we continue? So uh, we want to get everyone's different perspective because um, I'm sure you've all had different uh, situations and in the discussions I've had with you privately, I know that things have gone up against you. So we'll start with you, Ash, because you're primarily on Instagram and <laughs> we know you've had a few, you know, little hiccups there along the way. Um, <laughs> how, how do you say it? Uh, look, end of the day, you have to be enjoying what you're doing. 
And if you're not, there's absolutely no point. Uh, so when you get to that stage where you're just not feeling it, you need to walk away. Um, but there's a secondary problem in my view, and that is caused by social media and the need that everyone feels that they have to produce content and within certain time frames to do that. So I think uh, that's caused a secondary issue where people are under so much pressure or perceived pressure that they must put out content and therefore they're pushing through these periods of uh, where they're just not feeling it, which is only going to make things worse because if you're not enjoying it, what the hell is the point? You know, there's, there's more to life. Um, just take a break from it for a bit and go and do something else, whether it be sitting in front of the idiot box. If that's what rocks your boat, well, so be it. But just have a reset until you're feeling that passion again. Because if you're not feeling the passion, um, it's going to show, I believe, in both the work that you're producing and also any content that you're putting out. So it's a it's a double-edged sword. Um and there's, there's a lot more perceived pressure in my view than what there actually needs to be in reality. That's my thoughts. Oh, they're all fair points too. And uh, I, I, just uh, adding to that, I don't think people do put too much pressure on themselves to, um, to produce content. I mean, I, I haven't put out a video for, uh, for almost three months mm -hmm. and I started to feel, uh, am I letting my subscribers down? You know, or, you know, what's, uh, am I just not getting into this anymore? But, you know, look, the other thing is, um, like, life gets in the way, yeah? So um, I, I, I just had a lot. And plus, it was hot in the workshop. I, I don't handle heat all that well, as, as you know. So, but I will um, add to that, mm -hmm. that if you're a business and you're using social to promote your business, well, then it's a facet of business that you've just got to take care of. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of people that do use social media, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Instagram, whatever, to promote their business. Well, it, that's a different scenario because in that case, you're actually, that's a task of the business that you need to do as part of running the business. So mm -hmm. you don't have the same leniency as what you might have if you're just uh, doing it as a hobby uh, in the background in your workshop for something to do if you're running a business that's a completely different viewpoint and you've got to approach it in a different way exactly right yeah look uh, as sure in my eyes you're a highly competent uh, video maker on instagram so um uh, are there scenarios where you're trying to organize perhaps getting um sponsorship or uh guests on board um is, is that sometimes a little bit of an issue where they say yes, and then they don't come through. Ah, How do you deal 100, with that? 100%. Um, look, particularly in the, in the area of guests, um, there's an awful lot of time that goes into, A, firstly, finding the right type of guests to keep the show interesting, um, and then actually getting it to happen. And, yes, I've been disappointed on numerous occasions where people have said yes and then they've changed their mind or they've stuffed me around for months on end uh, to get the actual content to be able to edit for the show. So uh, that that's a constant, but that's, that's part of it and you just have to deal with that. If I let that get me, affect me, there will be no show because there's an awful lot of that. You've just got to push past that and say, right, okay, that's a shame, but we move on, on to the next one. It's a fact of life and it, it, it just mm -hmm. it's in every facet of life. So um, you can choose to let it affect you and give up, uh, but what have you achieved doing that? You know, you've just got to say, case sera, uh, shame, maybe another time, see you later, move on to the next one. Yeah, good advice. Yeah, yeah. So, Mark, pallet punter, whatever, whatever designer trade name you have nowadays, mate. Um, <laughs> you you sort of come onto the scene 
you're probably very prominent on Instagram before I knew you, but uh, you start a YouTube channel and you, you, you're like a, you know, you're getting around like a blue ass fly, mate, and just zip, zip, you're, you're busy, you're active. And so for a while I was thinking, that's great, you know, you're, you're, you're getting your content out there and things like that. But whilst you're working at such a rapid pace, do you ever find or have you found, um, you know, you, you hit a, a curve in the road or hot oil and thinking, I'm going too fast, I could be making a few errors here or losing a little bit of uh, interest. Have you had that? Um, let me well, let me expand on what Ash said about the social media side first and the, the pressures that come along with that. Now, um, firstly, this this is my hobby and I've, I've always treated it as a hobby, albeit the, the idea is the hobby has to pay for itself. So um, I was playing the Instagram game from, from day one, posting photos, videos, and all that sort of thing. And uh, it was it was doing quite well. And for me, I would I could look at it how someone else would look at it. And like, there's a lot of the time people would ask me, do, do you do this full time? Um, and that was probably my most asked question. And it's like, nah, mate, this is just, I'll just do this on my days off. So if you were to look at my Instagram, it would look like I am in the shed all the time making heaps of projects uh, making heaps of content now um it the reality is like it's not like that at all so i think i figured out early on that if i'm going to produce content i've got to get bang for my buck with whatever i'm making in the shed so um to give you an example after having the christmas break off having a good spell um getting back into the flow of things uh, i don't have a lot of big projects sorry there's a helicopter in the background, it's quite noisy. Let me let me lean in. Um, so I don't have a lot of big projects, and you might think, oh, what am I going to post? I can't just like if I'm making a mallet, I'm going, I can't just post a mallet. Now, what am I going to do for the rest of the week? So sometimes I can be in the shed for one hour, and I can pull five, six, seven days worth of content. So there might be five or six really interesting steps that I can pull out of out of one small mallet making video. Um, but to, from the outside, people see your presence all the time, thinking that you're smashing it out and you're, uh, you've got heaps on the go. That, that might not necessarily be the reality. So um, early on, I, yeah, I was making a lot of different random projects and it probably looked even more busy than it was. Um, so I think I, I haven't really hit those crossroads where I think I'm under the pump, I can't produce any more stuff because I've sort of got, I've figured out the recipe where I can have a full-time job, I can have the family and I can have this hobby that includes content. Um, so I can do those, I'll do all those things without feeling that I'm, I can't do this anymore. There's too much pressure. Um, for people, for people coming along new to the game, if I could offer any advice, I'd say don't, don't always assume what someone else is doing um, means they're killing it or they are all over it. Um, there's, def there's a different perception and you can paint this picture online that may not necessarily be true. So I think like for at the moment making making some mallets um, because there's a lot of lamination. It's not just chucking a lump of wood on the lathe and turning it. There's lots of lamination. Um, there's joinery of the mallet. Uh, there, there's lots of steps prior to gluing anything together. And because I think Instagram is, it's definitely moving into a TikTok world, um, the, the, almost the shorter the video, showing as much shit as you can in 15 seconds or less is what is, is becoming more popular. So my, my way of thinking for videos is I'm not gonna tell a minute long story anymore for the whole mallet. I'm gonna start telling a 10 to 20 second story chuck some cool music on, boom, there's piece content. Um, so that's just the video. Um, then there's, there's also content telling the story of what you're doing at the time. So again, just because I'm pumping out heaps of stories of my one day in the shed, that doesn't mean I've been there for eight hours. Um, it just, it just may look like that because the shed is shit fight and there's stuff everywhere. So, and then, then there's some photos on top of that. Um, so don't, don't discount a photo a day as, as putting yourself out there looking busy again.
Okay. And he so, gets five episodes of OnlyFans out of that footage as well. <laughs> <laughs> and who wouldn't pay to see this? <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a good concept and philosophy to work by. And I, I think the problem sometimes, myself personally, I think, um, what can I produce in such a short time span that will be any good or conducive to what I'm doing? But um, it comes down to another, a separate exercise. We, I hosted a challenge a while back, I think it was a year or so ago, make a video in three minutes. And this bloke was complaining about that, but he got it. He got through. But um, it's just saying to yourself, well, it's a test of your um, editing, isn't it? Your editing skills to uh, capture an audience and let's face it, most of us are, uh, are visual creatures who see something at a snapshot and go, yep, all right, that's in, fixed into my brain. And, you know, rather than 10 minutes of going blah, 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 it's it's more conducive to uh, that platform, isn't it? Well, you, you've been put into a situation where you're not really having a choice in the matter. Uh, the Instagram algorithm is pushing everything towards reels. So... You can sit there and say, okay, uh, no, that's not my cup of tea. I'm not going to do it. But the reality is if you want growth, you better be on that train. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. Uh, Instagram simply won't give you the coverage on uh, on your content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can agree. So just quickly on the reels, like um, I'd only been doing the stock standard photos, videos, on on instagram tiktok came along and i think i had more of a personal what's this shit uh, because my kids is my kids are using it and it just looks like a big time suck staring at a screen etc so then instagram launched the reels and i'm like nah, this, i'm not i'm not gonna do it i don't i just don't give a shit so about a week later i went hang on if if you're trying to do something with your social media to to grow it um make it something um attract sponsors or whatever you, the reasons you're doing it for. If you don't use the tools, then your, your page is going to die in the ass. Um, so I was already making the video. All I had to do was make it taller and make it fill the screen and call it a reel. So as soon as I did that in the, um, the wild west of reels on Instagram, you could do anything and the numbers would go through the roof because they're pumping it. So, I capitalized on that and I pumped out reels in those first few months and that brought in heaps of followers. So had I not done that, I don't know where my account would be sitting right now. Yeah. Interesting. So Whitey, mate, <clears throat> how about yourself? Have you uh, been in that predicament where you've gone full steam ahead and, you know, like you, you capture a different audience with uh, your CNC uh, building and, you know, you make up a, or really good quality chopping boards. Um, have you found that you've been in projects and thought to yourself, this is taking a long time to do or what am I going to do to overcome uh, that time factor? Well, my, my page is a little bit different to Ash and Mark's in regards to I, I try to keep it just the end product. Um, whilst I know people love to look at the build process, um, I, I'm trying to keep it more that, as I said, just that upper level. For if anyone sees it, that's the end product. That's what we see. Um, I almost could do a shoot-off channel with a how I get to that stage, which would probably do a lot better than what my main page is. But it's I try to limit exactly what I post just so it's only the select best of everything that I've done that's up there. Um, as I said, people love that other stuff, but that's sort of not what I'm, I'm aiming for. I'm, whilst it's only a hobby, I'm still trying to keep it on a business level just so potential buyers or someone like that, if they come along, um, they're seeing it as a more professional page. Um, not saying what Mark and Ash build isn't, isn't professional, but it's just that I yeah. guess my overall end goal is if I can show a professional product, deliver a professional product, people are going to see the qualities from yay to the start to the finish. Um, saying that, if, say, Ash wanted a board from me, 
I take photos and videos during the build process and I'll send them to him mm. whilst I'm building it personally. He, he, gets, he gets to come along on the ride with me, which is part of the, uh, I guess, the service that I offer. Um, he can see what wood's being used, where it's at, and, and people seem to love that. They, they just love that that part of it's almost as if they're part of the build process as well. Um, when I so did start, sorry, mate, sorry. you're using that as a sales showcase. In other words, your your yes, account, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah makes basically. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why I love reels because reels are, are quick. As Mark said, they're fifteen seconds, thirty seconds at the most. They're quick, easy. You can pump them out. I can do that on my phone. I'll go sit on the lounge while I was having a cup of tea edit them up, put the music over them. I, I, I always try to – I don't like copyright music. I got stung with one with that, my version of Mark's pencil holder. Um, so I try not to use copyrighted music. That way my, my stuff goes through fine. Um, sit on the land, pump it out, send it out. That, that video I did of my take on Mark's pencil holder, that, there was more time I spent editing than I did actually filming and – yeah, whilst I whilst I, I love the the end result of that for, for that that competition, it the return for the the time that I spent making that video was just not worth it for myself. Okay, I, look, I I for one, um, I'd love to see a video of you making a chopping board from start to finish. Yeah, as I said, I, I know people would love to see that and. Mm. I'll probably put that on a on a YouTube. That'd be something I could I could stick on my YouTube channel. Um, I try to limit those sort of videos on my, especially on my Instagram. And as Ash said, it's it's more of a marketing platform for me. Um, which when I started when I originally started my channel, it was just pretty similar to to Mark's channel. I was just taking photos, videos of what I was doing. Um, but then when I I came to a point, I went people. If someone wants to buy something, they don't want to see some douchebag in his shed chucking wood around. Um, they want to see the product that they're going to buy. Um, so I cleaned up my channel, got rid of all those other uh, major building type videos and then just left with the final product video. Oh. I, I definitely reckon a second channel of me building would probably do a lot better than my main channel just because People just love to watch people do stuff. We're, we're, mm. we're visual creatures. We just love watching stuff. I, I see a classic cross flow of, um, you know, like how to and style versus entertainment and then versus marketing. Because, yes. and, and trying to encapsulate that into your own version of what you do on, on social media is sometimes where I can fall apart. I'm thinking, what am I trying to do here? You know? Um, so, uh, identifying the different type of genres or um, audiences you're trying to uh, cater for can sometimes be the confusing factor in why am I doing social media? I have to think about it, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, I, I yeah. did have at the start, I, I will admit, I got a bit of a, a burnout from trying to earn internet points, I call it, the trying to get your followers. Uh, and you you see those, everyone doing the, the follow me weekend schemes where I follow Ash, he follows me back and I follow, and you did, it's, they're, they're dead followers and just fake numbers and they don't actually help grow your page at the end of the day because they're not following you for your content. They're following you for a number on their page. Yep. Which is just, it's, it's just internet points, which at the end of the day means nothing. I, I won't. I won't get a sale from that internet point. I, I won't get anything from it. If any, if all it does is clog up my Instagram page or my page when I log on, that I'm not seeing the content that I really should be seeing, like like yourself, Dirk. I, I won't see yours because all this other crap from my internet points is getting flooded through on my page. Fair enough. Yeah. Look, um, we we personally love doing this, right? Yeah. And. Ash can attest to it's interesting to interview people. Um, so we, we probably categorise this as more entertainment yep. or people with stories mm. and blogs and all that sort of thing. But 
um, you know, our respective channels. We we try to do our hobby, but it's um, into this framework. We we we'd like to hear your story, your knowledge, and share that with you know potentially an audience uh, in general, Chris. So yep. you know, we we take a lot out of this aspect of it as well as our own personal channels. Yeah, but. Um, well, before we go on, I'm going to be the director here for the moment and I'm going to say we're going to take a short break and uh, have another ad from one of our partners. Wonderful partners. All right. We'll be back. Stand by for some brilliant acting. G'day, Hoss. You look Harry. like you're in trouble. Yeah, Harry. Thanks, mate. Um, I've, I've been trying to sand up this blank, but I just can't get it shiny enough. Mate. I've got a two-part solution from Custom Creations. Really? Does it work? Give it a try. I will. How'd you go, Mike? Harry, that was the best stuff you could have given me. Look how shiny this pen's come up. That is superb. I oh, love it. It's brilliant. And we're back after hearing a nice little ad from our partners, Chris. Yes. Um, we have Ash from Woodwork and Whiskers on Instagram. We have Wood by Whitey. He's on Instagram. And uh, Danesy Mark Dana. Uh, Dana May, he's on Instagram and YouTube. And uh, today we're having a discussion about when cracks appear. And we've been talking a little bit about burnout, you know, maker fatigue and that. But one of the other ones I wanted to uh, highlight today, Chris and guys, is um, Whitey, you're now you're going to have a transition in your employment you know yes. the real thing that puts food on the table so uh you may have a little bit of a break hiatus from your craft how how do you see that uh turning out as far as you know you're going to have that time apart you, when you come back you go mm, am i still doing this well that transition has already started its own stresses because of its the role it's got so it's started to build up work stresses so this will be where something like this will come in to bring those stresses back down and that's what originally i started this for uh, the problem i'll have is i won't be able to keep up with as much content as i originally have because i'm i have to shift my focus over to my work life i'll still try and build something to, to get just to reduce that stress uh, but then the other issue I've got is where I'm, I don't know where I'm moving to housewise yet, whether I'm actually going to have a shed that I can do anything in. I may have to stick this in, in storage for 12 months, three years. I, I don't know yet. I'm on a bit of a limb at the moment with which way life's going. Yeah. And um, what about you, Ash? You, you, um, you had some issues on Instagram there with, uh, like you may mention before, um, you've got a few accounts on Instagram now, but um, that's probably been a bit of a hurtful time for you as well, mate, because you were fatigued with that and thinking, am I going to seriously going to continue doing this? I absolutely asked that question, um, particularly when I lost the second account um, that so many people had... Um, put in the effort to try and get me back up and running. Uh, when they deleted the second count overnight, that was just about me done um, because the amount of work that had gone into building uh, both of those accounts was astronomical. And, you know, you do ask yourself the question, well, if I go through it all again, am I going to be faced with the same problem? And the issue is, is you, you're dealing with a with a faceless organisation. You can't talk to anyone at Instagram about it. Um, so it did get to that point where I was ready to give up uh, and we just had that last-minute reprieve where out of the blue, four months later, uh, I get an email from Instagram saying, we appear to have made a mistake. Sorry for the inconvenience. And then it was back. Um, and it probably just in the nick of time, because if it had gone on much longer, I mean, I was doing like five or six appeals a week to Instagram to try and get it sorted. 
um, and you just get no response. So that's the most disheartening part is you, you're never making any progress because you're never getting a response back from them. Um, mm. But that's, that's the nature of the beast. It is what it is. Um, it's a free platform, so they can pretty much do what the hell they want. Uh, and it yeah. certainly does, doesn't affect me. There's accounts in America that had half a million followers that got deleted overnight. Same thing. So it's, it's something that uh, people really have to think about, particularly in relation if they're, if they're using it for business. Uh, they've got to have some other sort of backup in the, in the wind because I do know of businesses that have basically lost everything overnight, gone because all their customer base, everything, all related to the platform. So when they got shut down, they were literally losing tens of thousands of dollars a week um, because they had no communication there. So, yes, Dirk, uh, in answer to your question, yes, that did nearly kill me off, um, but we came back just in the nick of time. If, if I can quickly jump in here, this is part reason why I don't post everything. This is why I only post the end result. I'm very careful with uh, comments I make uh, pro uh, publicly on, on, the, on there as well. A lot of times there's a lot, lot of things I want to say, but I, I won't. I hold that back. So I, I look at it as an image that needs to be kept high, uh, whether that's to do with my real-time employment has taught me that. Um, but I, I love Mark that he just gets on there and swear words left, right and centre. And, <laughs> and, Hang on, and, you don't hold back when you're commenting on my stuff. Yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's, that's your channel and that's that's what your channel has grown to be known uh, as. So it's it's acceptable on that channel, if that makes sense, where if I go over and, and say something like that on someone else's channel, it's it can be blown out the water and next minute someone's reported it and then I'm, I'm sitting there with Ash pulling my hair out and I look like Chris. Well, well perfect mean? example. I got <laughs> shut down for a couple of weeks over a typo. Exactly, oh, exactly right. Hey, so, that's why. Ho, 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 exactly right. <laughs> yeah, we all know exactly what you meant, though. <laughs> that's funny. But that, that's, that's why I'm very careful with what I actually post. I'd, I'd love to just go all out. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't want to end up putting potential sales off or, or, or tarnishing the quality that I've built up for, for Wood by Whitey. It's, it's, for me, it's more selling the name Wood by Whitey. You, you, someone hears mm -hmm. Wood by Whitey, they automatically go, yeah, it, it's good stuff. Makes sense. Mm. So, Chris, I reckon it's worth um, probably taking out of the picture us two because um, this next question is going to relate a little bit more to Mark and uh, Grant about judging uh, a young family and making decisions that work in the best interest of the, the family mm -hmm. um, and balancing your hobby time because obviously you do need a lot of time, you know, raising children and giving the commitment of uh, activities for them. So how do you find that balance? You just throw a bag of chips in the bedroom, mate. I'll be right. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> um, I'll dive in. So I guess I was pretty lucky that my kids were at school um, when the woodwork addiction basically replaced mountain biking. So um, the other the other way I'm lucky is I'm a shift worker. So I have my off days, which a lot of the time fall on school days. So I call those my woodwork days. Um, now that's got to come if there's nothing else going on as well. So I would strictly only do what I had to do between after dropping the kids off and before going to get them up, you know, going to pick them up from school. So there was a good five hours on most days uh, that I could do that. As they're getting a little bit older and telling me to piss off, I don't want to hang out with you, yeah, I'm cool. Um, I'll start to slide out to the shed a little bit more on the weekends uh, as long as, again, there's nothing else going on. So if my wife is working, kids are bumming out, doing whatever they want to do, then I'll pick up a bit of time there. 
Uh, there's definitely a period of time where I was letting the whole hobby take a little bit, take a little bit over, if you will. So yes, I was only doing it during the day, but um, I was probably itching too much to get out there and other things might fall by the wayside. So I've, I've sort of reeled myself in this year. Our kids are now at high school, um, bringing it right back to, it's gotta be only in school time. Now that includes if I want to sit down and do some editing, editing and all that sort of stuff. I don't want to be on the phone um, in family time. So a lot of the time at night, I don't answer people. I don't talk talk to anyone. So so then that after school time is just for the kids. Like if they need help with homework or whatever's going on, that time's for them. And during the day on my off days, that time is for me. So that's much healthier for a family, I think. And it still gives me plenty of time to do what I want to do. Excellent. Whitey? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much like Mark, shift worker. So a lot of my time was the young bloke was in daycare or he's at school. So I'm able to go out in the shed, do what needs to be done. Uh, then other times would be when they've gone to bed, I'll go and do computer stuff or whatever needs to be done there. There is a big, big juggle with it. I know I've lost many brownie points from the wife where she's gotten home from work and the house looks exactly the same as what it did when she <laughs> left work. But I've, I've managed to cut and create a little bit of sawdust <laughs> in the shed. Uh, so to me, it, it, it's happened, but it, it's, yeah, you just need to be mindful of it, especially with, with uh, young children and stuff like that. And Mark, Mark's right that they need the time. They need a dad. And if you're not there, they're the ones that are ultimately missing out. And Ash, you've uh, you've obviously been there, done that, but you're you're on to the next uh, chapter of grandkids. So, how's that I certainly been? am. And uh, yes, I I'm not going to lie. I do get a bit frustrated at times when I've got the weekend all planned out as to what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this. I'm going to do some editing. And then the missus turns around and says, "Oh, we've got that. Uh, we've got two of the kids tomorrow night." And I'm like, "Okay, so tomorrow night. So let's say, for example, if that was tonight, that would start most likely at about two o'clock Saturday afternoon, and then they'd probably <laughs> get picked up about five o'clock Sunday afternoon. So it puts a whole new uh, dimension on the plans." Um, having said that. Hunter is now at the age where he's uh, he's getting more interested in the workshop. Um, you know, he, he'll pick up a drill or whatever, and he loves the bloody air compressor, loves shooting me with the air compressor. So I can get a little bit done when he's here, uh, but the younger ones, yeah, no, they just want your full attention the entire time. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit more interesting. So here's a tip, Sunday morning, go down to 7-Eleven and grab as many bags of chips as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was that easy. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take um, that much whiskey in their water bottle to put them to sleep either. <laughs> Just a tip. All for now. What do you reckon, Chris? This has been a really fruitful discussion because I, I was really wanting to find out different opinions on a few of the uh, topics, uh, you know, situations we all face from day to day, month to month, year by year. Well, this is just, um, as far as I can see, it's just the tip of the iceberg, how people, you know, yeah. combat all that sort of stuff. I mean, if we had three different guests on, there'd be three different uh, viewpoints yeah. on it. So um, it's just good to see how these guys tackle it, you know. Yeah. So, look, before we go to our next partnership ad, Yes. I'd like to personally, and I'm probably on behalf of Hoss, thank Ashley from Woodwork from Whiskers. With, whis with Whiskers? Woodwork and Whiskers. Get Woodwork? Right. Oh, but crying out. Did you spike my drink this morning? No, Mark Dana. Not enough, obviously. <laughs> Mark Dana from Dana Made and uh, Grant from Wood by Whitey. Yep. For coming on today, giving us your, um, you know, what, whatever um, situation, scenario you face in this wonderful world of making. And, um, Guys, thank you heaps for doing that. Not a problem. No, problem. no worries at all. 
And Mark, it's good to see you made it through without having to rescue uh, some little old lady out of a tree, which is good. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> I'm going to go and do some, do some non-work related stuff soon. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right, thanks, guys. We'll have you back. You know that. Um, happy Chris day. will invite you. Yeah, when you, you run out of talent again, we'll, we'll, I'll be quite happy to come back again. So. Beautiful. <laughs> Cheers, guys. No worries. Some actual talent. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hoss. How are you, Harry? Good, thank you. I'm looking at doing a little bit of epoxy work. Yes, I can help you there. Do you have a product? I do. Who, who does it come from? It comes from Hammeroo. Let me have a look, please. My, my, that looks like a two-part mix. It is a two-part mix, and it's a two-to-one mix, as it says on the bottle. Is it made in Australia? It is. I might take a few more, then. Well, I only have these. I'll take those. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Harry. You're welcome, boss. It's got the paint. <laughs> So there you have it once again. What a wonderful panel of guests. Is that, a, is that a, an expression, a panel of guests? A panel guest of guests. panel? A guest panel, panel of guests. Uh, whoever. Panel beaters. Whatever. Whatever. Um, yeah, we had Ash Woodwork and Whiskers. He's grouse. Mm -hmm. He says it how it is. Yep. Mark Dana. He just, uh, he's, he's inspirational. Yep. Woodboy Whitey. I uh, don't know about him. Well, he's a copper, so, you know. Yeah, nah, he's grouse. <laughs> Love you, Whitey. <laughs> Hey, uh, Chris, we've got to say, if people haven't already subscribed to the show, we'd, we'd really be keen for you to do that. Yep. And hit the notification bell, hit all. Yep. And you will not miss out uh, on having a highlight to say where on our show's on. Mm -hmm. And thank you to our partners who are grouse. Always. And hey, we don't always say this, but I want to say a quick good day to uh, Eric. Yeah, Eric. Yeah, no, we have to. Eric, uh, we should actually apologise for not mentioning him yeah. sooner. Eric writes every show. He leaves us a beautiful comment. Yep. Eric, mate, sometimes it takes a while to get back to you, but you're a, you're a, you're a good scout. You're a gentleman. You're absolute, a cobber. Yep. Absolute, cobber to the show. He is yep. an absolute gentleman. That's it. So without further ado, next week's going to be another blistering show. You'd think so, wouldn't you? We might put a guest on. I yeah, mate. See, yeah, what see what happens. Yeah. I don't know if you'd be bothered turning up. Nah. I don't know. That's, well, never know with us. <laughs> That's true. They say yes, and then yeah. they don't appear. <laughs> mm, fair enough. All, All right. right. How are you going to sign out? Uh, bye for now. Ciao. No. Oh. Huru. Is that it? Is that yours? I think so. I've uh, had a few people do this now. I know. I know. Bye yeah. for now. See ya. Oh, we meant that about clothes off, aren't we? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Consummate professional you are, Daisy. I just make shit up on the go. Hey, how's that, Whitey? Can you, are we back in tune? Yeah, it's working now. I don't know whether my young bloke's watching porn too much YouTube or the missus. Porn. Got oh, you've got that thing yet. you got to clip that on. What? Because there's my hair. That's all right. I can't be sucking on a lolly while we're talking, mate. I can't be looking at a half suck lolly. <laughs>